Uh, those guys, Mercer Bears, have been in a regional tournament. That, that club can flat out play. I had about three pro guys during the, you know, the last couple days call and say, get ready, man. These guys can flat out play. And um, I think you saw that tonight. Uh, I thought the keys to the game were Tyler Ahern coming in, you know, calming things down for a bit. And obviously, Davis Hare was fantastic on the back end. So, um, questions? You talked about kind of what those two provide in a game where, I mean, what the lineup was able to do to a lot of your other guys, the stability they provided. And there, Davis, too, I know he's had some kind of tough luck loss, I think, in the last time out and some other games like that. What, does, what have you seen from him early this time? He's um, a little bit too amped at times. Um, you know, then he tries to overthrow, and obviously he's got a big arm. But um, I like him 92, you know, 91, 93 with that thing sinking instead of the fours and fives that he had, tends to elevate. Uh, you know, the home run he gave up to the left-hand hitter uh, against Texas Tech, you know, and he gave up another one early, the same sort of thing, trying to go back and get when you don't need it. If you're going up in the zone, go for it. You know, forcing that thing and, you know, give me all you got. But when you're trying to get outs and, you know, you got to work down the zone. He throws a heavy, heavy ball. His spin rate is crazy low. You, you like your odds when they go ahead and potentially walk Jackson for Tyler up? Well, uh, I mean, sure. You, you feel like you're going to get a good AB from either of those guys. And um, you know, Green's got a high on base percentage, just like Tyler does. And, um, you know, who's right, who's wrong? I don't know. I've seen it done both ways. With Tyler, he's always had the raw stuff since he's got to campus. But what's clicked for him in, with the command this year? You know, I think a lot of it was between his ears. Um, there was days he'd go out and everything was fine. And, you know, my son, is there something wrong with you? You know, that's not there. Um, you know, he just gripped it a little too tight, if you will. And, you know, he's a guy that's really, you know, bought into the mental side of it. And it's been, been really good. With the walk-up, I mean, you've talked about kind of the separate relationship of, of treating Tyler like any other. Is that something, do you enjoy that moment strictly as a coach and not kind of take the uh, dad aspect into it at all? Yeah, I mean, I was starving, so that was, <laughs> um, yeah, sure. There'll be a time for, stuff, but um, Matt A for the check swing, but, but anyway, I'm a weirdo. No, he, he's a good player, and again, I'll say it again, he's here because he can play, not because he's my son, but I am happy for him, and it's us. You said in the offseason, too, when you guys brought him, it was to be for depth and, and to see what he could do, and then you commented that he kept getting better and better every day until a point where you said, we looked at the staff, I said, you got to put him in there. Are you, are you surprised that he's only, I mean, he's supposed to be in high school. Are you surprised that he's playing at this level? Because he's not just doing it against whoever, whoever. I mean, Texas Tech, he was fantastic. He had, he's not, the, the moment wasn't too big for him tonight. Are you surprised as a ball coach that he's come in and adapted as quickly as he has? You know, there's something to be said, you know, about growing up in a dugout. You know, you, you get used to it. It doesn't, um, you know, the, the attention and the, the you know, being able to control yourself. He's, he's always been that type of type of guy. Um, he, he beats himself up a little bit too much, um, and we're working on that. The old flush things, and there's a, there's a few of them that got to do a better job of being able to flush it. But I, I thought he would be, you know, a guy that you know, would eventually get to where he could hit at the top, possibly. Um, but you know, it's it's been I don't want to say a surprise. He, he's a good player, you know, and I just I'm glad he's with us. You would know as well as anyone kind of the pressure of being the coach's son and having kind of living under that shadow and playing under that shadow. I guess did you kind of talk to him to prepare him for kind of what that was going to be like, knowing having been through it yourself? You know, I, I told him when you know he decided that he wanted to do it. Um, you know, I told him I said it's going to get ready. You know, it's everything that you do is going to be looked at. It's human nature by your teammates, by the fans, by the opposing team. Um, and then when we go on the road, they're going to be on you. He's, he's used to hearing it because he's been in the dugout for so long. The fact is now directed at him. I don't think it bothers you know as much as other people. There's something about just you know. You look at all the major league sons of major leaguers that have made the major leagues. You know what I mean? That's that's basically the same analogy because they're just it's so home. You know, it's nothing nothing to them. It's a lifestyle that they've basically you know they've been my kids have been with me. You three different guys play first tonight. What was the thought process playing taking out Carter and then taking out Cooper? Yeah, I mean, 
there's things that we do that are set and, and you know when you break them it's not you know it doesn't work it's not and they know that um, and you know I don't want to go into it but they made mistakes that are unacceptable and they're fine they, they get it so it's the young pups that you have to really worry about when you take them out of the game after a game like this, when you, you throw seven pitchers, I mean, as a coach, is, is this when guys start coming and talking to you if they don't get in a game like this about what they can do to, to get better? Is this a challenge to those kind of guys? Yeah, I mean, generally Mondays are those days, you know, open door. My door is always open in the office. The guys want to come in and talk. But, um, you know, some of them are going to have to wait their turn. You know, we've got a big staff that is talented. And um, we talk to them every day, preach to them about being ready. You know, next man up, your time is called. Unfortunately, guys get hurt, guys get tired, guys whatever. Um, you got to be ready. Saw a number of, of pretty remarkable plays from the infielders tonight. You see, I mean, is that is it just the more you play, the more comfortable that you can expect them to kind of get there? Yeah, it is. Again, you get used to things. Uh, that was what my main focus of the post game meeting was. You know, Andrew had a bad AB, goes out, makes a spectacular catch. Greeny had a bad AB, goes out, makes a great defensive play. Nico Baldor, you can you can be a loser and say, oh, well, I haven't got my ABs, I haven't played first base in a while, I've got my crutch, I've got my excuses, but no, there was none of that, and um, that's what it's all about. Elijah homered again tonight, and I, I noted, just looking back, it's all been the center or right field. Are you starting to see in year two for him, him having an approach at the plate? Has it improved what he wants to do when he goes up to the plate? Because I imagine most high school kids you don't really have to have an approach. And year one, he might have struggled with that. And uh, year two, what do you think? Yeah, I, I definitely think it's improving. And that also goes back to the hit by pitches. People are like, why do you harp so much on that? Well, you look and you're like, well, if I go in, there's a really good chance I'm going to hit him because he ain't moving. So what does that do? It forces you back to the other side of the plate. And, um, you know, you're, you're, it helps. I mean, we go through it in pregame meetings all the time. Man, this guy, he's going to wear it. He'll stay in there. So you're more reluctant to, you know, to try it. And, Got to be ready for it. You coached a lot of athletes that have been able to go to opposite field. Mike McGee was one buster, obviously, knew how to do it. Is it just raw strength that they have, or is it quicker hands than others? Not everyone's able to really have that power and, and tap into it to right field. And you have to let it get there. You know, too many guys want to hit the outside pitch in the same spot, the middle pitch and the inside pitch, and it doesn't work like that. You know, the inside pitch, you're going to hit furthest out in front, and then it's kind of like a diagonal back middle pitch here, and then you've got to really wait to let that pitch get back there. Because if you do it wrong, you're just going to, you know, flip it that way. There's not going to be any power. If you let it get back there, you know, you can juice it. So, uh, he can sure juice it. He intimidates a lot of people just in BP. <laughs>